radio. One of the biggest obstacles artists face in the music game is access. Getting access to the people that can make it happen or access to the information and resources you need to get to the next level. That's the key. That's why you need two of the biggest in the game on your side. Introducing J.R. McKee. Boom, man. Welcome to the real industrial plug. You heard me? Topic real quick, man. I hate I hate what happened all together, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish the best for all of them. But music related, very important because we get access all of the time. Mm-hmm. Is PR still important, or are digital blogs all that matter? And an example of a digital blog is uh, our generation music, a college kid, an academics. Right. Versus, you remember PR used to be like the Fader and Source Magazine right. and things of that nature. So the right. question is, does PR still matter, or can we just rely on the digital blogs? But it, to me, it depends on what's reference. Because if you got a, a, a good PR person, it's not just about blogging. They make sure you can get in certain events and keep you up to date on what's mm-hmm. going on currently. So, Perfect. you know, I, I use a couple PRs, and, you know, they'll tell me, hey, this event going on, this, this, you need to be here and you need to be there because they're in the know of what different events and shaking hands because the music industry is not just about, um, it's not just about promotion and marketing. It's about relationships. You get where I'm coming from? Exactly. That's a so, great point. Yeah. So, you know, the blogs, promotion and marketing wise. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's better, but a PR to me is still necessary for when you get to a certain level. Like once you right. get past that blog spot where it's like people know who you are and they know your face, then it's a time for adult PR. But for, right. for them to make sure you're in the spaces where people now see you and they say, dang, I seen you online and now they get to shake yeah. hands with you and it's connecting the dots. It becomes right. a better situation for that PR. Right. Except for that artist or that or that influencer or that personality. Now you're absolutely right. Like you have to you have to reframe, reframe the way you think of PR. Because people did used to think, oh, this is the person that can get me on a fader and then the source and things of that nature. But now PR is more much more about relationships because right. this person is in a know. This person knows what's going on. This person is making sure my name is in everybody's mouth because right. the industry is so small. So if you have an important PR that's friends with, you know, X, A through Z, and you're their new high client, they can make sure people are aware of you. You know what I mean? Right. The blogs are more so to make sure the public is aware of you. But we all know the game is ran by tastemakers. And the right. best way to get to those tastemakers is through the right PR. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. a tastemaker may discover, discover you on the blog, and that's cool. They feel good. Oh, I, I saw them on his blog. But it's going to be way better when a PR call them and be like, yo, this is my guy. This is who I'm running with. You need to mess right. with them. Because you know that is called a cosign. You right. understand what I'm saying? And so PRs are very good, very great at cosigning and making sure everybody knows about you. And, and it's a couple other things. They, yeah. like, like like somebody just said, like for what Will Smith is going through right now, he needs a dope PR. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. know that? Like he needs media training. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's a lot of different things that PR is still good for and is needed right. for. You know what I'm saying? Right. To help artists, because it's a lot of artists that don't know how to, they can't get on here and talk, or they can't get on mm-hmm. the radio station that's syndicated and speak without cursing. You know what I'm saying? So, right. You, you right. feel me? Or don't know, or say the wrong things. You know what I mean? So, right. And, and so, this is a conversation me and you, Boom, had a while back about is all um, publicity, good publicity, where the right PR does exactly that. They, they turn any publicity into good publicity, it's the spin. They spin, they spin it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they find a way to make it a positive. You know, at one second you hating Will Smith, and then the next thing you know, they PR come through a campaign about exactly. how he's going through depression, and now it's like, oh right. my God, oh, Will Smith. Exactly. Oh, let's pray for so Will. Emotional. You know what I mean? <laughs> let's, let's pray for Will. Let's uplift Will. That's a PR. A PR came right. through and spun it. You know what I mean? And right. that's that's their job to take the negative and turn it into positive. You know what yeah. I mean? So so a good PR is definitely something you should have. Now, now when it comes to breaking an artist, a brand new artist, because a PR obviously right. you have to have some momentum because right. they're not gonna vouch for somebody who's starting from the bottom. Mm-hmm. Now, to get that momentum, you can go through those digital blogs. Like I mentioned, our generation, college kids, etc. Sure. You can uh rap is one of them. You can go mm-hmm. through them and make sure when you drop a new video, you're on there. You know what I mean? When 
when you right. when you have a piece of content that's working, you're on there. So you use that to build momentum. And once you have that momentum, then you hire the right PR to make sure now tastemakers are talking about this momentum I've built. You know right. what I mean? So I think it's levels to PR too, though, Jr. I feel mm -hmm. like you shouldn't even have a PR person until you have. Well, unless you go, like I said, unless you're going through some kind of media training or something like that, which they could offer yeah. you with bios and things of that nature. You know, that's mm -hmm. a good time. But as far as like really hiring one, because PRs are they're, they're fairly expensive and they usually work off like three month retainers. Um, yeah. I just think you have to have some kind of notoriety. You have to have a story. So a good PR in the beginning levels, they'll help you right. build your story and create your story. But once you have a story and people know who you are, like, you know, once you got a name and a brand and it's different levels, you might have one locally, you might have a local PR and then you might have one, you know what exactly. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nationally, where it's like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. I'm big everywhere. And now I'm going to, I'm in the main events with, you know, the movie stars or the fashion people or the, Right. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or the Grammys or the Oscars or whatever. And I'm at the major events and parties and that, and I'm in the know and I have access to it. Yeah. And and I love that you said that because people shouldn't be afraid to work with the people that are hungry in their area. Like if right. you see a person that wants to be a PR and they're hungry, they can help you in the time being and get you to another level. But then they also have to be humble enough to know, okay, I've covered what I can cover. I would love to partner with a larger PR now and learn mm -hmm. from them as well as elevate you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you got to have both. You got to have a hungry person when you're starting out, but then you also have to have that person be humble enough to know, okay, let's bring in a larger person now that, and I can work with them. Not Don't get rid of the hungry person. You just allow mm -hmm. them to work together. Hey, J.R. McKee here. Listen to all of my artists, managers, and executives. It's time to evolve into the streaming business. I'm the number one streaming executive in the industry with over 30 platinum and gold records in the last two years alone. I've been teaching everybody how to do what I do. So if you're interested in breaking through in the streaming business, go ahead and enroll in my masterclass to join my stream team community. The link's in the bio. Or visit our website, thestreamteam.club. Y'all know what's going on, man. It's your big homie, Boom Man, checking in. Authentic Empire's own CEO. You want to set up a meeting, you want to rock with the team, you want to get heard, all you got to do is log on to www.authenticempiremg.com or text the number 4485700040. Let's get it. Boom. And so it's, it's steps and it's levels like you said, but I'm glad you said that because I know some people will be like, oh, no, nah, you ain't did nothing for nobody, but they hungry. Everybody mm -hmm. got to start somewhere. If this for person sure. hungry and they see the vision, then that's a great team member. Right, right, right. So yeah, so def definitely tap in with that type of person, man. Um, I agree, I agree. And then let me, just, let me just say one thing on the digital blogs. They cost money, they are not free. And so this is where having a budget comes in. Um, and I, and I, I will say just a piece of advice from me to the audience. Okay. I, only, I only spread content that has already worked on my page. So I'm not gonna say, oh, I love this video. Let me, let me pay the blogs to post it. If it right. hasn't already done numbers on my page, I'm wasting my money. You because, said what I call testing. We yeah, exactly. Product. If it hasn't had a positive test on my page, there's no need to pay pay the blogs to post it. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm looking at my page and it's doing three, four, or five times better than my stuff normally do, oh, let me spread this content. That's the way I would go about it. Okay. Just a little free game from you guys right there. There it is. There it is. Free game from the game. All right, next topic. And boom, I think you spoke on this before. Can okay. you get blackballed in the music industry for speaking your mind on record labels and record execs on social media and radio? The reason why I want to have this conversation is because I see so many artists that are speaking out against their labels, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I want you to lead. I want you to lead this topic because it's become now it's become like a norm, right? And right. I think, but and I think what happens is. The fans, right? Because they're so big of fans of these artists, they always side with the artists. You feel with me? With the artists. And, right, because they're fans. You get where I'm coming right. from? But the right. question is, 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 isn't it two sides? You understand what I'm saying? And my thing is wanted to know if an artist is bashing a label, you get where I'm coming from? Do mm -hmm. you feel that potentially hurts the artist from being able to get future business in that business. In I that know business. What your yeah, I want to know what your thoughts are. I think, okay, first of all, I would say that I don't think that it, it 
does because there are people out here so hungry and thirsty to win. If they feel like they can win with you, then then they will go after you. But I'm gonna be honest, like about this whole situation, because I I've had this happen to me before, where right. artists came out and they pretty much blamed their whole lack of success on me and. Mm -hmm. then, I know I have such a different mind, so I know other people wouldn't have looked at it like this. But I remember when I was watching it, I was like, man, I really hope they have a plan to build off this uh, this uh, moment that they're having. Because them talking about me gave them a moment. And I'm sitting right. back like, man, I hope they got a plan to, to use this momentum for something. Otherwise, they're wasting their time. Because right. for, for me, I knew that everybody that I know knows me. So I didn't, I didn't like anything that right. they were saying had no validity because I'm like everybody know me they know what I'm doing so we all know you capping but I hope that this cap takes you somewhere <laughs> right <laughs> that's truly how I looked at it and right. it, it it didn't but I was like well shit you just wasted that little breath you know what I mean that's how right. I felt about it I'm like shit if you're not gonna do nothing with it you wasted your time but I, I was never concerned about it just because I knew everybody knew me. And so I'm right. like, everybody know that I do good business, so I don't, I'm not necessarily right. worried about this. But right. I, I would say, just to be honest, people are thirsty. So if they feel like they can make some bucks off of you, they don't care what you mm. said in the past. They gonna try to, right. they gonna try to work with you. Now, now we uh, there's so many layers to this. Right. At the same time, I had people who wouldn't work with that artist because they knew that they spoke out against me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I, I right. literally, I remember it. It's so crazy because I was calling and I was like, yo, can you put them on this tour? Like, I, even when they were saying all this, I was still working. I'm right. like, yo, can you put them on this tour? And they was like, nah, man. Um, th that, well, I was just saying that name because it's not this name. They was like, nah, Gotti said that he ain't fucking with him. He, he saw what happened with you and right. name. And I was like, damn, like, I'm like, I ain't even know Gotti fucked with me that hard. But he was like, yeah, Gotti ain't fucking with it. And I was like, all right, right bet, cool. So I so I had people not fuck with them because of the right. shit that they were saying about me. You right. know what I mean? So you know, right. that's my personal experience. So on one hand, yes, it can hurt you because if people rock with that person you're talking about, they're not gonna fuck mm -hmm. with you. But on the other hand, niggas is mad thirsty. If they feel like they can make some money off of you, they gonna go for it. Right. So for me, I'm surprised that you didn't give an emphatic no. Yeah. Right. And the reason why is because. You know, we all been through those situations where, you know, people feel like their feelings trump somebody else's feelings and they're bigger or they have more power or more control. Like I said, oh, yeah. I don't know what's in the water. Everybody's emotional. But this is the thing. I feel like who has the key to take anybody's black body in any situation? Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? It's like, right. it's like saying I'm the king of the universe. You know right. what I'm saying? you're not going to get another chance ever again in life. And the thing about it is with the internet right now, um, all you can do is you can have a viral moment on TikTok and you right back in the game because you don't necessarily need labels or you don't yeah. necessarily need uh, executives to make money in music. Now, right. are, can you get banned and will it make it harder for you to grow in the business when you have a people who are aligned in business? Like I know for a fact, if somebody's cross you, I don't care who they is because I'm right. an exec like you. It's a fraternity. You feel where I'm right. coming from? Of people who are in this business. I'm not fooling with them. Hey, right. you say, hey, boom. Nah, bro. Because at the end of the day, if they, I know you. You're a good dude. You get where yeah. I'm coming from? And if they didn't do right with you, I already know you ain't going to do right <laughs> by me. Right. It's like, why would I even waste my time? Because I already know the mental and the mind frame is on some ignorant shit. And the problem with artists, because see, I can speak on both ends because I've been an artist as well. Right. Artists, they think on one side of the brain, and it's a creative side. Creative. And so their, their creativity comes from their emotions. You understand? Yeah. So it's just like athletes, too. It's just like uh, Antonio Brown taking off his shirt in the middle of the game. You know what I'm saying? Or it's the egos. It's the diva. It's, the, it's all those things inside of an artist, right? Um, that is all those things inside of an artist that helps them become creative. But the problem yeah. is they don't know how to control it when things don't go in their favor. And then that's where you get the words prima donnas and divas, divas and all that. Yeah. Stuff. yeah, because what happens is they get so much self-esteem and they get so uh, high up. Now they feel like they're untouchable. You know what I'm saying? Because they have a huge core fan base and they know now I have a fan base and I'm the head of my fan base and I can make my fans 
counsel Turn. you out. 